Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube with a, another model video. Reviewing the Tamir Waterline Series 1700 scale Imperial Japanese Navy transport set. It's uh, two ships and I'll be building the number 101 class landing ship. This boxing and release came out in 1993 though the original could date back all the way to the 70s. There is three runners, one runner per ship and the third one is a bunch of additional components such as aircraft, turrets, torpedoes a part of the waterline series and in alliance with Aishima and Hasegawa. Also included a color guide on the rear of the box, additional paperwork, the history in English and Japanese and very basic instructions, guides to the extra parts and water slide decals. The three brands, members of the Shizuoka Hobby Council and Committee, combine their resources to produce all the different parts required to make the entirety of the Japan wartime fleet which I've seen a few displays in Japan. These 1700 scale kits are fairly easy, quick and fun to build. Not a lot is required in the way of tools though I do recommend some very fine nippers such as Minishima or Tamiya. I've had fun with one of the destroyers and submarine but this boxing was an absolute must with these tiny tanks on top of the deck depicting the type 3 amphibious tank and the type 97 light tank which comes in a few parts very fiddly but the detail is astonishing what they could have achieved at the time. The subject matter and kit of a support ship is criminally underrated and I've seen it in discount piles or listed as dead stock, how I've acquired it for my hobby shop. It's retailed anywhere between 6 to $15. It's a very low parts count, a very quick build. For the modern ship builder who's looking for photo etch and absolute uh, realism, may not be for you. It is, however, a lot of fun. I built this project away from my workshop with a very simple toolkit and portable airbrush. It was helpful with quick drying plastic cement and tweezers to get those fine antennas and turrets into place. The build itself took a little less than an hour and a half. Once fully assembled, any excess glue spillage was sanded back and the whole project was airbrushed in automotive grey filler primer via 0.3mm battery powered airbrush. I have a collection at the current location I'm at of some two decade old Tamir acrylic paint. A lot of it was still fresh of a decent viscosity. It was easily thinned down with lacquer thinner and the appropriate two tones of greys and reds were shaded for a bit of shadowing effect. The goal is to go for an out of the box finish that would have been appropriate during the 70s to 90s. I didn't have the exact colour codes that were recommended on the box, though in my little tub I managed to colour match as closely as possible, which is a bit interesting to see the uh, tanks in an orange and tan colour. It has been several years since I've last airbrushed with Tamir and Gunn's acrylic. Initially I thought it would be a bit rusty as it's a little harder to spray than lacquer, though to my surprise I got it fairly easily and effectively. I suppose this is the overall improvement in my airbrushing ability. On another note, the APR airbrush is a system I've been sitting on since 2019 for a few years. The mini compressor and power bank still works quite well with a 30 minute run time and half that being charged on a USB. A uh, family member was very confused to see why my airbrush was in the living room attached to the computer. Very pleased to report that the battery nor motor has worn out over time and I will be pushing it over the coming month or two. The air pressure and flow is very weak and the opening quite small in the aluminium model airbrush. It is most recommended to overly thin your paint at about two to three part thinner to one part paint and just softly apply in multiple coats 
to build up. It is far more time consuming to use this airbrush than other models, though due to its portable nature and how cheap it is, still highly recommended and an awesome piece to have on the go. With a fine brush, uh, little bits of detail such as the guns and antennas were touched up in a slightly different shade of grey. The uh, tanks and windows were also touched up. To me, a panel line accent colour black was thinned down 50-50 with enamel thinner and touched into various detail, the tanks, panels and whatnots to add definition and detail. It was just a pin wash wipe back. The edging of the hull of the ship was touched up to give a defined dark line of where the hand railing was with Vallejo weathering pencil. The colour separation of the bottom red part of the hull and the top were super glued together and a final coat of matte clear by Mr Hobby mixed in with some smooth matte base to give a very nice dead flat finish would be expected of a military vessel and that is the whole build in a nutshell i may have spent about three and a half to five hours total from start to finish it's not exactly a wow factor or an amazing model to look at compared to other things i've worked on over the years it was very easy and simplistic not a lot to it came together very quickly and didn't encounter any challenges and that's okay i'm on a bit of a break and i just went through the motions with this particular build it's cool it's fascinating i learned a bit about the subject matter but definitely find it amazingly cool and no regrets tackling it whatsoever i love japanese imperial tanks more than anything from the interwar to world war ii period and seeing the tiny ones on the deck is just definitely what big seller for me my efforts were just that it's kind of okay with shading or hand painting more detail and even finer brush you could definitely push this to be a real showstopper or pleaser probably a bit of a water base or a whole flotilla of multiple warships but I'm content with this old-fashioned, very basic model painted in a scheme in colours that would have been available during the time with methods that were available to me. And sometimes it is a bit humbling to go back to basics and rehone the very start of the hobby with just minimal tools. Learn to fall in love with the hobby again, sort of from the approach of a beginner or a kid cracking open a beginner-friendly kit, which I highly recommend it for. A lot of fun, you guys got to get on it, but far from my best work. Thank you very much for watching, as always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. We'll catch you guys next time. See you later.